Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Zori Sadagi? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, and offer my analysis. In 2023, 33-year-old Zori Zadegi was a software engineer who lived with her 35-year-old husband, Malad Nazari, in Redmond, Washington. Zori's husband was also a software engineer. He worked at Amazon since January 2022. The couple was originally from Iran. They married sometime around 2011 after moving to the United States and purchased their house in Redmond in 2021. Their house was worth about $1.6 million, so they must have been financially successful at some point during their careers, although it's worth noting that the average cost of a house in Redmond, Washington is about a million dollars. The average cost of a house in the United States is about $350,000. Sori operated a podcast that was about the technology industry. She used an app called Clubhouse that allowed people to talk in chat rooms in addition to listening to the podcast. A man named Ramin Hodakavram Razehi started listening to the podcast in late 2021. He lived in Texas and was a long-haul truck driver. Zori met Ramin in an audio chat room on Clubhouse, where she was facilitating a discussion about how Farsi speakers could find work in the technology industry. Eventually, Zori and Ramin started a friendship. In summer 2022, she met him in person as part of a group of people she befriended. After this, the relationship went downhill quickly. Ramin started stalking Zori. He called her repeatedly, sent her text messages, and stopped by her house. In November 2022, Zori told her husband about her stalker, indicating that Ramin had threatened to end their marriage, meaning the marriage between Zori and her husband. According to a protection order filed later, here are a few examples of Ramin's alleged stalking behavior. These are documented by Zori. On November 6, 2022, Zori told Ramin to leave her alone. She did the same thing on November 8. She blocked numbers he was using on November 10. She blocked him on social media three days later. After this, Zori received messages from different numbers and accounts and blocked them as well. Presumably, these Messages were from Ramin. Ramin sent her a text message on November 18, saying he wanted to talk. Zori told him, I can't talk. Two days later, she told him that she did not want to hear his voice or communicate through text messages. The next day, November 21, Ramin called Zori from a private number, and she answered. When she realized it was him, she told him not to call and to leave her alone. Ramin informed her that he was in the neighborhood. Zori told him to go away. On November 22, Ramin called from a private number again. Once again, Zori told him to leave her alone. At this point, Zori blocked all private numbers on her phone. On December 2 and December 3, Ramin called Zori from an inn not far from her house. On December 4, Zori received a text message on the app Telegram which indicated that Ramin had been around her house. Ramin sent a similar message four days later. Zori had back surgery on December 13, which left her feeling particularly vulnerable, like she was not able to move around well. On December 20, her husband left for Australia. Just a few minutes after he left, Ramin arrived at her house carrying flowers. Zori called the police at this time. Sometime in early January 2023, Ramin sent jewelry to Zori. She called the police, who in turn gave Ramin a warning on January 16. Six days later, Ramin called Zori from a hotel in Nevada. On February 20, 2023, he sent her a neck scarf. The police took it the next day as evidence. On February 28, Ramin left Zori multiple voicemail messages between 1 and 2 a.m. that she described as vulgar, angry, and threatening. In addition to all of these alleged incidents, Ramin allegedly called Zori hundreds of other times. He called over 50 times in December 2022 alone. 
He contacted Zori's husband, even though she never gave him her husband's contact information. On March 2, 2023, the Redmond police filed charges against Ramin, one count of stalking and two counts of telephone harassment. A warrant was issued for his arrest. The next day, March 3, both Zori and her husband, Milad, obtained a protection order. A hearing was scheduled for March 17, 2023, but that hearing would never take place. The police searched for Ramin, but they could not find him, presumably because he was driving all around the country for work. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On Friday, March 10, 2023, sometime around 1.45 a.m., Ramin showed up at Zori's house in Redmond, Washington. He was driving a red pickup truck with Oregon plates. Ramin had been there the night before as well, but it's not clear when he arrived in the state of Washington. Ramin broke through a bedroom window and made entry into Zori's house. He confronted her mother, who was in the house at that time. There was a brief altercation. Her mother was able to escape to a neighbor's house and call 911. When the police arrived, they found Zori's husband, Malad, near the front door of the house. They pulled him outside and realized that he had been shot. Malad did not survive. When the police entered the house, they found the bodies of Zori and Ramin. It appears as though Ramin shot and killed both Zori and her husband, Malad, before bringing an end to his own life. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Not much is known about Ramin's background. He lived in Texas, drove a truck for a living, and presumably had some interest in the technology industry. He was divorced with one daughter. She lived with his ex-wife in Texas. He had no criminal record, although he did have pending charges for the stalking. Item number two, the circumstances surrounding how Zori and Ramin became friends are not really clear. She indicated that she met him as part of a group of people that she befriended, but then there's also this report indicating that she concealed her interactions with Ramin from her husband until November 2022. Regardless of the nature of the relationship at the beginning, Ramin clearly viewed it as romantic at some point. He told Zori that he loved her. He delivered flowers to her. He showed up at her house repeatedly. On one occasion, he followed her to a conference in Denver, Colorado. Ramin knocked on her door right after her husband left on a trip to Australia as if he had been waiting for him to leave. He was obsessed with Zori to such an extent that he contacted her friends as well as her husband, Milad. This brings me to item number three. It would appear that Milad started out trying to be friendly to Ramin, but then became more disturbed by the stalking behavior over time. The delayed reaction by Milad might have been because Zori didn't tell him about the stalking until November 2022. Whatever the reason for the politeness, it was evident in a text communication between Ramin and Milad, where Ramin was complaining that he couldn't get in touch with Zori. Here is a summary of that exchange. Ramin wrote to Milad, quote, she doesn't pick up if I call, unquote. He was referring to Zori. Milad responded by explaining how his wife was an adult, and if she didn't pick up, it meant that she didn't want to talk to him. Ramin said, quote, it's not like we never talked before. We had a long relationship. I have met her in person many times, and we have been talking for a long time. She can't suddenly change her mind. I'm sure it's because of you, unquote. This last statement is one that would normally evoke a strong response from the husband of a wife who was being stalked, but Milad did not vigorously react. He said, well, people change their minds. No one owes me a conversation just because they used to talk to me. Ramin then claimed that he deserves to be heard. He has a lot to say. Zori owes him that much. Milad suggested that Ramin record his voice and send it over to Zori. That way she can listen to him if she so desires. Ramin then complained about how he has been leaving her voice messages, but she doesn't react. Milad explains how this is his wife's choice, not his, and certainly not Ramin's. At the very end, Milad writes, Is there anything else I can help you with? This is a bizarre exchange that indicates how persistent and dangerous Ramin was, and how Zori's husband seemed to be stuck in a perpetual pattern of pleasantness and politeness. 
On one occasion in January 2023, Mulat appears to be a bit more offended. Ramin called him when he was in bed with Zori and demanded that he put her on the phone. Mulad responded by saying, quote, The fact that you have the nerve to call me and ask the phone to my wife so that you can tell her you love her is incredible. That you expect me to actually do it makes me incredulous. I don't know in what culture, where in the world, that would be considered okay, unquote. Even with the more vigorous response, there is the sense that Mulad did not appreciate how serious this situation was and how Ramin had no insight. Ramin was crossing boundaries so egregiously that a strong reaction was warranted. For example, notifying the police immediately would have been appropriate. Ramin was not going to give up. Item number four. Like many stalkers who end up committing homicide, Ramin started by professing his love to his victim, but then made it clear he was going to be violent. For example, he threatened to show up at Zori's door and set himself and her house on fire by burning a tree that she loved. I guess it was a tree in her yard. Ramin told her husband that he would only stop communicating with her if he brought an end to his own life or died in some other way. Zuri described Ramin as having bursts of anger and being completely delusional. On one occasion, Ramin promised to send a jazz band to Zuri's house and have them play music for two hours. This demonstrates how sadistic Ramin was. He was even willing to expose his victim to jazz music. Item number five, Zori was in a terrible position with the stalking behavior. She felt afraid all the time. She was anxious and had trouble sleeping. She feared not only for her life, but the lives of her loved ones. Zori was powerless to stop Ramin. Her recent back surgery made her feel even more vulnerable because she could not easily escape if necessary. The police did not help in any way, but they did acknowledge that a protection order is just a piece of paper. It does not stop someone intent on causing harm. Item number six, what type of stalker was Ramin? Based on his behavior, Ramin appeared to be a combination of an intimacy stalker and a predatory stalker. The first type, intimacy, is when a stalker convinces himself that a woman is secretly in love with him. When she denies that she is in love with him, he doesn't take it seriously because he believes that she is unable to openly profess her love due to various constraints, like being married or her job. Most celebrity stalkers are the intimacy type. As far as the predatory type, this is when a man prepares for an attack in different ways, including the use of surveillance. This is the most dangerous type of stalker. The thing that really stands out with Ramin is how single-minded he was. He had no regard for Zuri's feelings. He felt as though he deserved to speak with her, and he even said that she did not have the right to change her mind. Ramin was highly motivated, sadistic, had no empathy, and had a massive sense of entitlement. Now moving to my final thoughts. At first glance, it might appear as though Ramin targeted his victim because she was a well-known podcaster, like this is one of the hazards of fame. But in reality, Zori had a podcast that appealed to a very small group of people. She was not very well known, rather she was very unlucky. She happened to stumble upon a determined homicidal stalker who was not willing to sustain a rejection. Those are my thoughts on the case of Zori Zadagi. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.